I really thought I was done talking about the Ripperverse, and I thought I was going to move on to something else, but the hits just keep on coming. So, as you know, the past couple videos I've been talking about the Ripperverse. People are excited about this, and I tell you how I can tell people are excited about this. My engagement on this channel is more than I've ever gotten. I've gotten more views. I have several YouTube channels and I've gotten more views across these videos versus any other video that I've, I've put out. It is pretty crazy. The speed at which this channel is growing and the views that I'm getting, like, I don't understand it. I don't know why. The only thing I can come up with is people are really excited about a comic book universe that is focused on storylines and good art. So Eric July, who is the founder and CEO of Ripperverse Comics, put out a message a few days ago. Now, the amount of money that he's raised, it's actually pretty incredible. And it's over the course of. I want to say two weeks now. I think this is officially the third week. I believe it started two months ago on, or two months ago, two weeks ago on a Monday. So I'm going to go to his website and we're going to look at how much money has been raised. So we're on ripperverse.com and you see that 3.2 million dollars have been raised in the course of two weeks that's pretty incredible when you look at his original goal his original goal was a hundred thousand and he's already at 3.2 million i mean he blew that hundred thousand out the water within the first probably within the first hour if i'm not mistaken he's grown exponentially very quickly Okay, so what's the story? What's going on? What's the controversy now? Well, let's get into that. I'm going to read you this article. Now, I am not really familiar with this website, but what the website covered is is pretty accurate to what's going on. It's uh, sankakucomplex.com. Don't ask me. I don't know. I was just looking for a website that had a semi-comprehensive article talking about what's going on. Now, this article was written on July 23rd. It is currently July 26th. I'm recording this pretty late, so it's July 26th right now. Um, Let's see. A new comic book company distancing itself from the major corrupt entities involved in the industry that have continued to push out nothing but woke political nonsense instead of entertain, in entertaining comments, comics, excuse me, much like localized anime and video games, has reported that those who donated to their comic campaign through PayPal have had their money stolen by PayPal which is in fact not the first instance of such an incident. So that's kind of the gist of what happened. So to get some further understanding, I go to uh, Eric July's Twitter page. Okay, transparency update for those that paid with PayPal and he put at PayPal and at ask PayPal for at Ripperverse items, they aren't giving me access to that money, despite allowing massive corporate entities access to money for pre-orders. We aren't awarded such a luxury. So what he explained in one of his videos is they're not going to allow him to access this money until the items are actually shipped, which, as he brought out, is kind of odd because they have allowed this for major companies. So I guess their thinking is, or their line of thinking is he's not big enough or they don't trust him or whatever it is. 
but he's been very transparent with this entire campaign. So this is kind of odd, but I'm going to tell you what I think about this in, in a minute, but I want to keep reading through his Twitter thread. Thankfully, the money I invested already pays for the product, so I don't need it to get the items to you. However, just so you know, I can't touch it until the items go out and then speak to another group of idiots over there at PayPal has your money. All right. So here's also what he says. And I'm, I'm putting I'm putting this information out because I'm sure everybody has probably watched a video where he's gone over this. But in case some people hadn't watched it yet, I want this to go out so you know exactly how to handle this because he put out specific details on what he would like people to do. So he said, don't put in a dispute. They then shift the blame to us. But you want to tell them if you are unhappy with this and if you're small and if you are a small business startup, I'd recommend you using uh, you not using PayPal as a pre-order if you needed access to the money to get the items for your customers. Now, if you if you don't follow many YouTubers, there's a YouTuber, Tim Pool, who I who I like watching for news and, and other content. But he swapped from using PayPal to using Parallel Economy, which, if I'm not mistaken, was either co-founded or or uh, funded partly by um, Dan Bongino. I couldn't even think of his name. And I believe that's what Rumble uses. So Tim Pool has swapped from PayPal to Parallel Economy for this very reason right here. What it appears like to me, and, and I don't know the ins and outs and I don't know the details. It appears that the old guard is making a concerted effort to keep smaller players out of the game. They don't want smaller players to be able to have access to the things they have access to. And it's becoming easier with the advent of the internet. That's what it seems like. And I'll, I'll go to something and explain to you why I think that. Okay. Uh, Eric July goes on further to say from his Twitter page, those of you that pay directly with your card, uh, uh, there is all good. We have access to those funds without any issue. This only applies to people that use PayPal, an option I only use because it was requested by others, especially international folks. So for the international folks, I don't know if you're allowed to use parallel economy. I would look that up and for future purposes and for future funding campaigns for small startups, as Eric July said, I would use parallel economy or cryptocurrency if you can use that in whatever respective country you're in. So this is what I thought when I saw this, by the way, in this article that I was reading, I believe they stated the fact that, okay, yeah, here it is, uh, estimated. Okay. So it says the owner of Ripperverse unfortunately has sad news to deliver through Twitter. However, as the man explained, PayPal has taken the money of those who purchase Ripperverse items through PayPal, estimated to be about 30% of the funds from the campaign. So when Eric July went over this, I believe he said it was about $1.1 million. So he still has a lot of money he has access to. And I believe he was just doing this to be transparent. Again, all of the items are already paid for. He paid for all of this up front. That's why he said before, this is not a, a crowdfunding campaign. All of this was already funded upfront by him. What he's doing is with, with this funding campaign, so to speak, he's just putting more money into the company. You are, we are the people who bought this book. We are his backers. We, we are to some degree, his financial partners, the, the fans, we're the ones that are funding this machine, which in my opinion 
is how it should go. And this alleviates outside groups having such a large influence on what is actually done. OK, so here's what I did. I said to myself, who's the top shareholders of PayPal? Let's read that. Vanguard Group Inc., BlackRock Fund Advisors, those are the first two, SSGA Management, Comprehensive Financial Management, Geo Capital Management, Fisher Assess Asset Management, T. Rowe Price Associates, Fidelity, uh, Fidelity Management and Research, uh, Northern Trust Investments, and Fundsmith LLP. Then I said, okay, who's the, who's the major and top shareholders of Disney? Who owns Marvel? Surprise, surprise. You find some of the same names, especially the top two. Vanguard Group Inc., BlackRock Inc., State Street, Morgan Stanley, State Farm Mutual, Geo Capital Management. Surprise, surprise. Bank of America Corporation, North Trust Corporation, uh, Bank of New York, Medlin Corporation, FMR LLC. Then I said, you know what? What about Warner Brothers DC? Or Warner Brothers Discovery, who owns DC. Surprise, surprise. Some of the same names. Vanguard Group Inc., SSGA Funds Management, BlackRock Funds Fund Advisors, Hitchcock Wiley Capital Management, uh, Lauren Capital Management, Clearbridge Investments, Southeastern Asset Management, Fidelity Management and Research, uh, Sasquahana Financial Group, never heard of it, and Geode Capital Management. So what are the odds that these companies have some of the same investors? And what are the odds that none of these investors are talking to PayPal about Ripperverse? What are the odds? Because, I mean, he's closing in on some really big numbers for a startup. In my opinion, I'm not going to pretend to be, you know, well versed or that knowledgeable in startups and how much money they normally make. But I would venture to say he's probably up there uh, amongst probably the top 15 percent of new startups. If I had to guess, what's the likelihood that these top investors and D.C., or Warner Brothers Discovery that owns DC, Disney that owns Marvel, and PayPal have some of the same top investors. Now, these shareholders, they normally have, uh, these companies normally have boards, which is comprised of the largest shareholders. So what's the likelihood that some of the board went to PayPal and said, hey, uh, yeah, this Ripperverse is it possible for you to hold that money until he can get these items to his people? Because this is just my opinion. I'm not saying this is what happened. It's a it's it's a probability that this happened. They probably thought he will not be able to get these items out without the funds. So they thought we'll be able to hold him up, stifle his whole campaign make him look bad because he won't be able to get his items out. And lo and behold, smart man, Eric July paid for everything up front. So he didn't, he didn't necessarily need any of this money. This money is helping him further build out this comic book company. How about that? So now these books are actually going to go out. He has all of the money he needs. He did all of this stuff up front out of his own pocket so these people can't stop him. He did this very strategically. I can tell he thought this through in, in a major way. I'm sure he, he sat down and talked with many people, and I'm sure he talked with other small business owners, planned this out methodically. We've been seeing over the years how company like, companies like PayPal have, have sought to shut down startups uh, we've seen even Visa and MasterCard do uh, very similar things. If I was starting up a company right now, and this is just my opinion, I would probably try my best, if I could, to use something like parallel economy and crypto. 
that would be my go-to just me personally and the way eric july went about doing this definitely very smart what, what you see is you see you see an apparatus throwing every dart they possibly can at a small startup what has he done they might not like his political views i understand that we all have you know disagreements on on politics and some other things but this dude is starting a comic book company and they're doing everything in their power to stifle this i've seen article after article just really like going after Ripperverse with everything. Nobody's even read the comic yet, right? At a bare minimum, like as excited as I am, I'm not going to say this comic book is going to be great. I don't know. I'm excited because I believe it's a huge possibility that it probably is going to be great. And you would think that some of these people writing articles would at a bare minimum say, you know what? Let's hold off until this thing comes out. Let's reserve judgment. And if it comes out and it's trash, oh, we're going in. And I would understand. I think what has many of these companies afraid is if this company raised this much money this fast, he has an organic following. He is an actual fan of comic books. He's coming up with original stories. It looks like he has some great art. And this will be, in my opinion, a huge challenger to the establishment comic book industry. And I think they're pulling out all the darts, all the darts. They want this thing to fail because probably how they're seeing it, if this succeeds, they will be exposed. The things that they're forcing and shoving down people's throats, the lazy writing, the bad art will be exposed and they don't want that to happen.